G'day team, Matty Graham here from Exponential Performance Coaching back with another Whiteboard Wednesday. Now today I wanted to talk about multiple carbohydrate transporters and how this can affect your performance on race day. Now this is revolving around nutrition. Now just to clarify a couple of uh, terms, carbohydrate is what we call a macronutrient, it's just what we put in our mouth whether it be a potato, some bread, um, sports gel, fruit, all of those things contain carbo carbohydrate in some form. Now what happens is our body breaks down that carbohydrate into two main sugar molecules. There are a lot of others but we're just going to cover two today. Glucose and fructose or fructose depending on where you uh, come from. Now, many things that we consume, so sports drinks, are already in a glucose form, so they're readily digested and absorbed into the body. Now, fructose is our fruit sugar. And what we can do is we can be a little bit crafty about how the types of sugars, glucose or fructose, that we take in during exercise, whether it be training or racing, to maximize our performance. Now, this here relates to our carbohydrate intake. Now, if you think back to our carbohydrate intake recommendations, they are 30 to 60 grams per hour. Now, this is non-specific. This is just 30 to 60 grams of carbohydrate per hour. It doesn't specify whether it's glucose or fructose. The reason that this is set is that 60 grams per hour or a gram a minute is our maximum absorption and oxidation rate of glucose. Okay, it's been shown in the research. Now, you may have seen other guidelines out there such as one gram of carbohydrate per kg of body weight per hour. And that's something that's been used a lot, something I've personally used as well. But this has been shown in the research to have no correlation whatsoever to body weight. So then your ability to absorb carbohydrate and metabolize it has no relation to body weight. So we should not be basing our carbohydrate recommendations on body weight anymore. This oxidation rate and absorption has a lot to do with the transporters that transport carbohydrate into the bloodstream. So over here, this is a picture of our gut wall, so this is our intestines, and then our bloodstream over here. And all of these green little dots here are meant to represent glucose molecules. So you've eaten something, it's gone into your uh, intestines and it's waiting to be absorbed. Now in your gut wall, we have a bunch of different protein trans transporter proteins, but two of the main ones are sodium dependent glucose transporters one which are these green ones and these are the ones that transport glucose now they're sodium dependent which means they need sodium to work so having some sodium in your sports food is, is good to help these keep moving so the glucose comes in you goes across the SGL uh, T1s into your bloodstream and then you can use it for energy so glucose, the maximum rate of oxidation, as we just talked about, is 60 grams per hour. Now fructose, the interesting thing about this is if you consume fructose, and these are going to be the little blue dots here, in the intestinal wall, there are only half as many transporters as there are for glucose. And these transporters that transport fructose are called GLUT5 transporters. So there's twice as many glucose transporters as there are fructose. And this is often thought that there's no point consuming fructose during exercise because it's, it's absorbed slower because there's not as many transporters. And then it goes to the liver and can be converted into uh, glucose to be used uh, for energy as well. So what we can do is knowing this, because there's half as many transporters for fructose, the maximum absorption and oxidation rate is 30 grams an hour. 
But what we can do is take this information and be a little bit crafty about how we plan our sport nutrition. Because if we take in 60 grams of glucose per hour, and we take in 30 grams of fructose, we end up taking in 90 grams of carbohydrate per hour. We're able to absorb it all, and we're able to oxidize it. Okay, this has been shown in the research to be able to do this. The really cool thing is, is that for events over two and a half hours, the higher your carbohydrate intake is, the faster your finishing time. So this is very, very uh, good information to know. The only problem to say, if you, if you took a 90 grams of glucose per hour, what would happen is that your glucose transporters would be saturated, they would be working flat out, but they wouldn't be able to keep up with the, the rate that the glucose is coming in. So what would happen is there'd be a big build-up over this side of the wall. And if you get a build up of glucose in your intestines, eventually it's going to cause GI distress, get stomach cramps, bloating, diarrhea, that sort of thing. Not ideal. The same would happen if you took in 90 grams of fructose per hour. So let's say you just ate a lot of fruit, say you ate 100 apricots. You'd have a massive amount of fructose in your gut. It would not be able to be absorbed into your bloodstream because you've only got very limited fructose uh, transporters. That, along with all the fibre of the 100 apricots, would build up in your gut, and then you'd have massive GI distress, uh, diarrhea, cramping, bloating, that sort of stuff as well. But if we mix them, 60 grams of glucose, 30 grams of fructose, equaling up to 90 grams of carbohydrate in total, we're able to optimise our transporting across the gut, maximize the amount of carbohydrate in the blood and then improve our performance. So some practical real world uh, foods or things you can do is now that the research is out there, sport gel drink companies are starting to make specific drinks and gels with this optimal blend of 2 to 1 um, glucose to fructose. So you could just buy the gels, the drinks, the bars that are mixed like this. Other things you could use is say, a really good one is a honey sandwich. If you have white bread, you're going to be getting the glucose. And then if you put some honey on there, that's your fructose, and you're away laughing. The other one could be just having some gels, or a drink, or a bar, but then having a banana as well. A banana has somewhere about 25 to 30 grams of carbohydrate in it depending on the size of it. But the key thing you want to focus on is this 2 to 1 ratio and that's glucose to fructose. If you can maximize that 2 to 1 ratio, remember it's this ratio because of the 2 to 1 ratio of transporters, you can maximize your fuel intake maximize your work output, maximize your result on the day. So there you have it, how to be a little smarter, a little crafty even, about how you take in your carbohydrates and maximize your performance. Please keep the questions coming. My list of questions is starting to grow, and I'll just add your uh, question in there, and we'll eventually we'll pump out a whiteboard Wednesday on it. I want to keep giving you guys good information that you can use to improve your training and your racing.